Hello, I would like to call to order this meeting for September 13th, 2022 for the Select Board of Berwick. We have uh, four members of the board. Linda is absent today. We have two members of the public, uh, town manager, town clerk. Uh, let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have our approval of our meeting minutes from August 23rd. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor? All right. All right, and Mark abstained because he was not present for that meeting. Right. Um, first public comment. All right, and I will close the first public comment. We have no public hearings or approvals. We have no reports of committees, right, James? Nobody right. else is yep. popping in. Um, we have no department reports, no appointments, no unfinished business at the moment. Uh, we have the town manager's report. Uh, first piece of business, um, I did a little research, um, actually had a recommendation for an HR consultant, um, and this would help fulfill some of the duties that uh, Lisa Hustis was fulfilling as part of her, her role. Um, and with um, a, a big plus is some of the HR functions. We've been using Bernstein Shore, which they're excellent, but they're pretty expensive because they're attorneys. Yep. So the main purpose for an HR consultant will help with policy review, make sure our job descriptions are up to date, accurate, um, review our policies, make recommendations, help with personnel matters, and um, in the whole gamut of what an HR consultant and, and human resources can provide for a municipality. Um, one of the last things I'll ask her to do is to pr provide a recommendation of what she thinks the town needs in terms of an HR role. So today I'm just asking for your um, permission to enter in an agreement with Betsy Olton, an HR consultant. How, how many hours a week? Up? It would, it's as needed. So it's an hourly rate? It's an hourly rate, yep. yep. You're looking more just day-to-day, -day, basic general business with it. Typically, like any um, lot of the contract cra contractors we have, sometimes sometimes it's five to ten hours. Sometimes it's very. Does she minimal. always uh, just does it for towns? She yeah, I and mean, she sits on uh, HR boards. She's actually pretty renowned. Um, I brought her up to a few uh, folks around, and um, she has a great reputation and uh, comes highly regarded. I think uh, Linda also said that she uh, she knew her as well. Oh, she did uh, huh? from her her experience in HR stuff. So uh, she didn't have anything negative to say. Um, I think um, I think it's a good idea, especially, um, you know, while we don't have that person right now in the town uh, administration um, and they can give us a full overview of whether we need to hire on a full-time person or if the, if the consultant can work or if there's some stopgap measures, you know, within the town itself that would work better. So uh, I think it's a a, de a decent idea. Yeah, I, I, I looked over the, the proposed contract, and, and it's an hourly rate, and um, it's an open-ended contract. So when we no longer need her, there's no penalty or anything. We can just end the contract. So um, I'll make a motion that we enter into a independent contractor contract with her name will get Betsy Olson. Betsy Olson for HR position. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? For nothing. Uh, anything else? On October 4th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Berwick Town Hall and Auditorium uh, between the Falls Chamber of Commerce and the Small Business Association, uh, we're putting on a small business resource fair for up and coming entrepreneurs and folks looking to develop their small business or create a small business. There's going to be anywhere from 13 to 20 different uh, businesses and resources there. 
So it'd be a great opportunity to um, A, see the edge, but also um, get the resources needed. To, uh, Time is that, James? 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. October 4th. Yep. I don't know if yours still counts as a small business, Mark. <laughs> What's say? Does yours still count as a small business? Yeah. Yes. Less than 200 people? 100. Oh, Less than 100. Really? I would guess more. Uh, quick edge update. You can see the 60-inch uh, stormwater pipes outside now. One of the first major site projects they're going to do is they're going to um, upsize a box culvert up on Wilson Street. And then they're going to bring in that 60 inch pipe all the way down through the middle of the site. We have a similar project um, where we're going to pick up at the prime green, uh, the edge green space, and we have our own 60 inch pipe we got to bring to the Salmon Falls River. That project is in 50% design. We'll have the plans by the end of this week. Um, and that's part of what the ARP, ARPA funds have been allocated towards. To, to place that, why do we got to go to a 60 inch pipe? The so we get the roads gonna have to be torn up the whole nine yards. Yep, yep, and it's gonna be torn up anyways for the trans for the street project and sidewalk project we're doing in uh, the year after. Yeah, so it could, the timing works out. The reason why it's got to be 60 inch is because all the water from Pine Hill comes down and it gets piped from Pine Hill to Wilson Street. Yeah. And then the stream from the by the fire and police station that gets piped and coalesced all the way down. Well, that's where the retention ponds are at the fire station, right? That's where it comes through. Well, off, off to the side of it, down in the trees, but yeah. um, like in between the the road and the I know public safety had, way. Yeah, there's a stream yeah. that goes in there. That's yeah. historically with prime was piped through the. Not really that big, is it? Yeah. What's that? Not much water comes down through. Well, it depends on when, the when, it, when it rains it, it, hard, it backs up a halfway those, up the hill. Those, those <laughs> ponds, probably the last rainstorm had not filled up, but had the water in them, yeah. probably a couple of feet. And in two days, they rained down. So, so they're doing their job good. That was one of, one of the reasons why they put them in, is to slow that process. So right, all that water didn't hit that culvert that you're talking about all at once, because that culvert. Yeah, we've had that. We have had problems at culverts for years. Any any time we get any really heavy rain, that's right. flood. and that's where we get the flood in the middle of the downtown. Right. So yeah. this really should fix it. I mean, we're upsizing it. They're they're doing a major upgrade, and they they're doing it. Great Falls Construction is doing it because it's the right thing to do, and they they didn't have to. Like we, didn't, <clears throat> they could have kept it as a forty eight inch pipe and then dealt with flooding down the road, but they saw it as the right thing to do at this time. Did you have a timeline of when they're going to tear up Wilson Street? At this point, the only work would be that culvert right on right. right in Wilson Street. I don't. I I I'd have to get back on exactly the culvert. Yeah. You know, they're working on the sixty-inch pipe. That's one of the first right. things they're doing, and I don't know if it's happening at the same time. Right. That's what I was wondering if they're going to be, you know, doing the culvert at the same time, you know, coming through. But just yep. yep. So so it's going to stop right. Before the gas station across the street, for now, right? It's gonna st it's gonna stop at the grass area yeah. at the edge. Yep, right across the street. And how long before we finish it? The goal would be spring twenty twenty three, probably at this point where by the time it takes to permit it, spring, yeah. spring or summer twenty twenty three, and then the Sawmill Hill School Street where we're reconfiguring. That's twenty twenty four. The next phase for Great Falls Construction, they're looking to build what they call 8, eight Main Street. So that's at the corner of the Main Street they're building and School Street. It's a three-story building. Looking to build, I think it's one commercial unit. There's, it's definitely a mixed use. It's one commercial unit and uh, 10 residential units. They'd be up on the upper and near where the uh, pump station is. Exactly. Yep. Right, where it comes out by Lyman Street. Yep. And tied in with that phase, they have a drive-through they're working on, and a um, coffee shop in a in a bank. That's that's the next phase. A Duncan's? <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed to say. Probably a little joke. 
No comment. That's what you have to learn, James. The politician is no comment. <laughs> At this time. And I'm done with my time manager report. <laughs> All right. Um, select many communications. The only re communication you received was from the Federal Aviation Administration about a change in uh, life flight helicopters um, routes, which may increase helicopter traffic over our area. Um, but that's not for certain yet. It just is a maybe, and they wanted to give us a heads up. Um, We'll keep you up to date. Um, approval of accounts payable and payroll warrants. Got a big one today. So, uh, make sure these are in order. We have payroll warrant number 14 from September 1st. And the amount is $73,594.85. Payroll warrant number 15 from September 8th in the amount of $76,029.58. Accounts payable warrant number 17 from September 13th in the amount of $1,620,487.80. And payroll warrant number 16 from September 15th in the amount of $73,051.81. I make a motion that we pay our bills. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid for another two weeks. Uh, new business. Uh, first on the agenda, we have our fire station purchase offer. Please come and join us oh. up here. <laughs> Tell the people who you are and what um, you're planning to do with our wonderful old fire station. <laughs> My name is Michael Oakes, and I'm just planning on using the first floor area for, I'm a Volkswagen guy, so it's going to be for storing Volkswagens and other cars that I have. And then the second floor, I haven't, I'm kind of hoping maybe you guys have some thoughts on it too, but I haven't really decided anything on the second for now, you know. Terrific. Um... Is there anything else that we should know before we consider your offer? Uh, not that. The only thing I had a question was just, so I know what the appraised value, you know, was or whatever, but that appraised value, you know, by the paperwork that I had gotten was for one acre of land with it. And we know now that it's, I don't even know what it is right now, James. But so that was the only thing was whether the appraised value can be readjusted to go with the fact of the land isn't what it is or was, should we say? You're talking about the the uh, assessed value. The assessed value, like yes, for the purposes. Yeah, what, of, however you guys. Yeah. The, 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 for the purposes of like property taxes, that would be yes, you yes, yes. Um, I think that is perfectly reasonable, and yes, we can absolutely have it reassessed and made sure that that is that that your tax card is 100 percent accurate. Okay. Um, but that should be probably should be pretty automatic since we're since we're you know, right. parceling off parts of it. Yep. So, yeah. Um, they'll get, they'll yeah. get a copy of the book. We'll definitely make sure that gets done for you. Okay. Uh, unless, of course, you still want to own Bernie or George Street <laughs> and do the maintenance. <laughs> well, I said, well, <laughs> I'm better without it. <laughs> okay. But for those who don't know, is the original deed was, it was town property for many, many years. The original deed included Bernie Street and George Street in it, and we had to parcel those off in order to sell. The parcel, so right is uh, just for the public to know. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, I have in front of me. What is the actual offer amount? Where is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Three hundred fifty even. Um, does anybody else have any questions uh, for Mr. Oaks? I'll make a motion that uh, we accept the contract for selling the former fire station to Mr. Michael Oaks for an amount of $350,000. I'll second it. Any further discussion? I'd just like to add that you know, we've had you know, many discussions about mm -hmm. this building. We've had some other offers. Uh, most of the other offers were all included um, adding apartments to it. Some of them included 
know they wanting to add a story or two to the building to put more apartments in it. Um, we thought we had an agreement at one time with somebody else and that fell through and then Mr. Oaks stepped forward <laughs> and uh, we've talked to him a couple different times now and uh, as he said, he's a collector of Volkswagens and he wants to use it as storage and I think it's quite a unique thing. He's yep. offered to uh, work with the town as far as using the upstairs. He's also you know, willing to work with the town for showing his cars, he oh, said. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, he would be more than happy to talk to people about that and uh, I think it's a great idea and quite a unique thing for Berwick. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Anything else? All those in favor? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I can't wait to work with you some more. Thank you. All right. Next is uh, an update to our pandemic policy. The, there's a few significant changes. The policy streamlined a bit. Um, it puts into place in the policy some of the um, more stringent preventative measures like deeper cleanings to not make that as an ongoing thing when there's a reduced risk. It puts it at the level when the level is high, then we start picking up our, our preventative measures. It also eliminates the pre-treatment checks. Um, a lot of towns and cities have moved away from pre-treatment checks. And there's been questions on the efficacy of the pre-treatments catching COVID. Um, the other significant change is no longer needing a negative test after day five to come back to fall more in line with the CDC guidelines that after day five can come back um, regardless of people can test positive for weeks and weeks after a positive test. Um, the, la the last piece um, is just clarifying that if you do come back in that five to 10 day window, you wear a mask. All right. Uh, any questions for James? No questions. I, th I think James knows where I stand a lot of it was we talked a lot about just following where the CDC is always constantly changing. And I think James has worked well with trying to keep up to it as it's been fluid. And yeah, I think this just pulls us right back in line with with where they are now, so. I agree. Uh, all right. Um, then I'll entertain a motion to accept the updated pandemic policy. I will make a motion to update or accept the updated pandemic policy. I'll uh, do. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. The now we have the Berwick Emergency Management Plan. Chief, did you want to say something about this? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to read the whole book. <laughs> As the primary person in charge of almost every emergency that will happen in town, I think uh, you might want to say something. Thank you. I'm well aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first emergency management plan for the town of Burroughs was developed, I believe, in uh, 1996. Um, hasn't been used a lot over the years, thank God, but it's been in place in the event that we did need it. Back then, we also did training to get everybody on board with the National Incident Management System, which some of you may be aware of now, but weren't before. Um, so anyways, we brought it back up. We decided we needed to review it, update it. Uh, we've updated this plan now. Um, which makes it about the same as every other community, basically the same plan, which makes it easier for county. Um, just updated phone numbers, come up with some SOGs. Uh, we take this plan now, educate the public, educate our employees. Each department head is responsible for looking at their own areas to see where there are things that they can improve. This checklist also helps them accomplish that task. And I'm here for guidance. Uh, James is overall responsible, and then it's me as uh, emergency management director. But we've come a long ways. I think the plan is pretty well where it needs to be right now. 
We are working with the Red Cross to get them in here on uh, discussions on shelters. We'll see that we've listed the, the old shelters. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, those need to be updated. Um, right now, in the event that we needed uh, an emergency shelter, what's happening within the county is York County Emergency Management normally opens up Marshwood High School, and that Marshwood High School is is basically for Berwick, Lebanon, anybody that needs it in this area, the southern New York County. And the reason why they do that is because they don't have enough staff to run it, they don't have enough equipment, so it's something we're going to be constantly working towards. Um, hopefully we'll never need it, but it'll be in place if we do. One thing I would bring up that that uh, for, except for the last couple of years during budget season, we've talked about emergency management funding for the town. And usually I could convince the town manager to put something in it. And we've been putting about $1,000 a year in it. And right now I think we have in that fund about $4,000, which if we have an incident... Would be gone in about this man of 12 seconds. Not anywhere is near enough. So when budget season comes up, we should take a look at that as far as the town and start putting a little more money aside. Um, other than that, if you have any questions on the plan, our plan now is to, if you approve it, get it out there and start making our townspeople and employees uh, aware of it. Thank you much. Does anybody have any questions for the chief? No, I mean, I read through it. And while it's a lot, like, it's very well laid out. So I, I think you guys did a great job, Weber, put it together with the update. I mean, it was the first time I've gone through it, and it was definitely well laid out. Well, that's good, because it gives us an idea of somebody new looking at it. And can, does it make sense? Can you understand it? It's, it's tried. We've tried uh, to make it as simple as possible. Um, thank God we haven't really had to yeah. implement it at this point. But, yeah. I mean, we've done scenarios we've done uh, over the years we've dealt with hurricanes uh, floods <laughs> ice storms this is new england you're going to have that type of thing and most people are on board with that so james anything you want to add i just think uh, the way i look at it is i think at some point we're due for an ice storm or due for a flood so to be ready mm -hmm. and prepared as a as a board with department heads, um, I know quite a few department heads have already got to work on getting their certifications in ICS and working on NIMS. And um, we'll start meeting quarterly, I believe quarterly, yeah. as an emergency management committee and go over some scenarios. Yeah, like I said, security. this plan is designed for department heads as well. You have a flood coming. You open the book, the flood. You pull it out. Here's some steps steps you need to take before it gets here, steps you may need to take during, and steps you need to take after. That's the process. Each department may have their own little SOGs they want to develop to do to, you know, to do with highway or police or whoever. But as a group, we're all part of the emergency management team. And if need be, we can call everybody together. We can do and open up an emergency operating center, which is at the fire station. And everybody get together and start planning. And we've done that before so, in the old station. The um, yeah, uh, with the way things have been, especially this year in terms of weather, which has been especially crazy. Um, you know, it, it's only a matter of time before we hit one of those one in a hundred year situations where we're. You know, we'll remember it forever, you know, so it's good to be prepared. And uh, I like that it's segmented, you know, in terms of its, you know, different disasters, because when you're prepared for all the little different disasters, when something comes out of left field that you didn't know you need to be prepared for, you've got something to refer to that, you know, might be close or you might need a combination of, of, of situations to go with. So um, it's it's a. Uh, it's well written. It's yeah. well. It's very comprehensive. Yeah, very well um, so yeah. Uh, any other questions? In the um, emergency management field, we call planning for the worst and hoping for the best. Yeah. And that's what we try to do. Not only in emergency management, but in fire after too. You know, you plan for the worst case scenario and hope for the best. 
I would hear a motion about accepting the emergency management plan. I'll make a motion that we accept the updated emergency management plan as presented to us. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right, accept it. Take that home with me again. There you go. Uh, this was already mine. I brought this yeah. back just so, to show that I read it. You know, I just wanted to make sure <laughs> people knew I didn't lose it. I didn't bring it home, put it in my garage, and then just never look at it again. We appreciate that. Yes. Just so. that, if I could say one, yes, one more thing. Tom brought up uh, <coughs> Captain Barnes' uh, monument that we've been working on for three years. All the parts of that are in now. They've been placed. Um, we're trying to do a wall small stone wall around that we're working on it uh, as far as the dedication when that time comes I'm not sure if, if it's going to be between now and March 1st of this upcoming year if it is we'll do a dedication as well as Joel's service on that day if we can do it beforehand and make it a little bit easier we'll also try to do that it's just not coming together as fast as we'd like. But if any of you would like to see it beforehand, we have pictures, or you're more than welcome to stop up, we can uncover it. We have not uncovered it at this point. Um, I'm not even sure that his parents know that it's there at this point, uh, but they will. Uh, so if that answers your question, and the board will be invited to all that yeah. when it happens. I would prefer to be surprised in the moment yeah. when see it with, everybody, see it yeah. with everybody else. But right. yes, of course, we would love to I'm attend sorry. that so please just keep us updated when I was surprised to see it <laughs> so all right we thank, thank you very you much Chief. next uh, we have the field user agreement which I imagine is why Angela's here hi Angela <laughs> hey guys Hello. I was talking to James earlier today um, we met with Ian earlier um, today to discuss all that all of our stuff and he's actually going to send it over to his lawyer um, to review some of the stuff um, and add more stuff to it because um, there's some components in it that we need to revisit and then Shannon and I have been working on it most of the day today so yeah. to readjust it all so we'll have it to you guys for the next commission meeting or Hopefully by the end of this week. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, anything we should be concerned about, or is it just you know ironing out the details? Yeah, just ironing out the details so we don't have a draft anymore. Gotcha. Um, but to really put it all together so it's a, an official document. All right. So the next person that comes in will have something to go by. Okay. Um, yeah um okay so any other questions about the uh field user agreement at this time nothing from me james good i, I just know that they were in the lab working on it all day so i'm looking forward to seeing the next draft all right uh, all right tripping uh moving along thanks angel thank you very much we have no quick claim deeds. We have no abatements. Second public comment. No second public comment. Um, all right. We have an executive session for discussion of personnel. Um, it's just a discussion. We're not going to be making any votes, so we won't be coming back out of that. Um, but before we go into that, is there any other business, non-agenda items anybody wants to bring up or discuss? All right, then I will make a motion that we enter executive session under Title One, Four Hundred Five Six A for the discussion of personnel. Second. All those in favor? Aye. That's all, folks.